After covering the Americans in the last episode, it's now time to cover the Germans. Everyone's favourite overly efficient nation. Like the Americans and the Soviets, the Germans are considered to be a quote unquote big nation within War Thunder, which basically means that their territory is large and fully fleshed out, with no major gaps between the battle ratings. Due to the Germans getting a lesson in both democracy and class during the mid part of 1945, the German territory has two distinctive eras. World War II vehicles and Cold War vehicles. While both German tank design eras are notable for their high performance guns, the World War II vehicles have an emphasis on armour over mobility, but just like the Italians in World War II, the post-war Germans decided to completely flip sides, choosing to emphasise mobility over armour at all costs. Regardless of the failure of German tank design during World War II, mainly how they couldn't drive 15 minutes without either breaking down or run out of petrol, neither of these issues are found in War Thunder which in conjunction with the large amount of Vera boos on the internet, has led to the almost fetishisation of German armed forces. But are these German tanks really as good as we have been led to believe? Well let's find out. Are you struggling to unlock new tanks, planes and ships, or feeling left behind due to not having a premium account? Well with the free GE Android app you can get it all for free. The developer of this app works directly with Gaijin, is 100% legal, and breaks none of the terms of service carry out small tasks such as completing surveys and watching ads and in return you'll receive free golden eagles for war thunder speeding up your progression when you earn 28 or more golden eagles you can deposit them straight into your war thunder account simple if you download and install free g with my link in the description below you can enter my personal code and receive 10 golden eagles for free using this link directly helps me as a creator but more importantly lads it helps you so let's help each other Download Free G from the Google Play Store and start planning on what you're going to spend those eagles on. Thanks again to Free G for sponsoring this video. As always, we'll start with rank 1. Due to the Germans getting BTFO'd by the Grand Fleet at the Battle of Jutland, the Germans were forced to sign the Treaty of Versailles in 1918. This restricted the German armed forces to essentially 15 men, a horse and a toy gun. A few years later, a pissed off German man decided he wanted a German army again, and set off trying to catch up on 30 years of tank development. This resulted in lots of tractor vehicles armed with machine guns and small calibre cannons. Best seen here with the Panzer II. It's fast, annoying, and can punch through pretty much every other rank 1 vehicle. Its 20mm cannon's high fire rate makes it very forgiving and very lethal. These two characteristics are found on most of the early to mid World War II vehicles, but let's not get ahead of ourselves. Apart from the famous light tanks that ripped through Poland in 1939, we also have the equally infamous medium tanks, mainly the early Panzer III's and IVs. These vehicles are rank 1, as they were designed alongside the Panzer IIs, although obviously for different battlefield roles. The Panzer III was mainly focused on anti-armour activities, whereas the Panzer IV was designed for infantry fire support. This is reflected in their weaponry. The early Panzer III at battle rating 1.0 is armed with a 37mm cannon. This projectile is small, but travels at a high velocity, which is the best way to penetrate armour. The Panzer III should be your go-to medium tank in rank 1. It's easily able to penetrate most vehicles at its battle rating. The Panzer IV, however, is equally as powerful, although it kills in different ways. It is armed with a 75mm low velocity gun. Compared to the Panzer III, the projectile is much larger, but travels very slowly. The increased size allows it to carry a lot of explosive, giving it immense explosive damage. The Panzer IV also has a heat round, giving you 80mm of penetration at all ranges. While not as easy to aim as the Panzer III, it is equally as deadly when you land a round on target. Another vehicle which takes the Panzer IV concept to the extreme is this thing. Bonus points if you can actually pronounce the name of it. Whatever it is, it is more than capable of killing anything it hits with its 150mm cannon. This much power located at battery rating 1.0, and it can easily kill a battery rating 11.0 main battle tank with a lucky hit. This vehicle is a tank destroyer, a type of tank the Germans invested a lot of resources in, as we'll see later on. The Germans also decided to use that 20mm cannon from earlier, but now, they put it on a high angle gun mount and used it to target enemy planes. This is the Flak Panzer, the first German self-propelled anti-aircraft gun we get access to. This vehicle is very lethal, and is the foundation for pretty much all other German SPAA until top tier. As with pretty much all other nations, I would never invest in a rank 1 premium. It's a bit of a stupid move, a bit like Hitler's plan to kidnap the Pope. And that pretty much covers rank 1. We do see some later versions of the Panzer III's and IVs, but they really shine in rank 2. The first rank of the German tech tree is pretty powerful, and the 20mm autocannon is highly feared and borderline hated. It kills so quickly, and in many players' opinions, it's simply overpowered.
The second rank of the German tech tree represents a part of World War II where the Germans were actually using their brains. They had decent tanks that were easy to produce, effective on the battlefield, and were not over-engineered to the point of insanity. Gone are the Panzer 1 and 2s, and in come the late to mid-model Panzer 3s and 4s, as well as a tank destroyer and self-propelled variants. The latest Panzer 3 available in rank 2 is armed with the 50mm KWK 39 gun, which offers around 20% more penetration compared to the older L42 gun found on the rank 1 equivalent. Naturally, this gives you better offensive capabilities and sets a general trend found in the German tech tree, that being high penetration guns, easily allowing you to penetrate most enemy tanks you encounter. This trend is also carried over with the Panzer IVs. Gone is the short barreled shield of a 75mm, and in comes the chad of the long barreled KWK 40L43. This gun is the sole reason that Germany is considered one of the best beginning nations in War Thunder, boasting a snappy reload and around 140mm of penetration. It gives the Germans an insane penetration advantage at lower tiers. KV-1s are scared of it, T-34s fear it, and Sherman's goddamn run from it. There is nothing in rank 2 which this gun cannot steamroll. These two guns, as well as these two tank chassis, make up most of the rank 2 German vehicles. For example, apart from the Panzer 3s and 4s themselves, we also have the Stug 3. Basically a Panzer 3 chassis formed into a casemate using the long barreled Panzer 4 gun. While incredibly powerful in real life, in fact, most allied losses came from these type of turretless tank destroyers, but in War Thunder, the base Panzer 3s and 4s remain supreme, purely down to having a turret. Think about it, most maps are quite hilly, and the casemate nature of self-propelled guns makes it difficult for them to be used effectively. We also have a bunch of German tanks, with names that literally nobody can pronounce. First up is a self-propelled AAA with 37mm autocannons. Being a half-track, it has pretty good traction, but poor manoeuvrability. Rather pedantic, I know, considering most SPAs don't even leave their bloody spawns. We also have the Hanamag Drilling. This is armed with three 15mm cannons, which are effective in both air to ground and air to air engagements. Now then, during the national German holiday of 1939, which saw rather large amounts of Germans visiting Czechoslovakia in a totally peaceful and non occupational role, some Germans decided to bring back some vehicles they found, which gives us a bunch of rather unique vehicles in the German tech tree. In the rank 2, we have the Marder 3s. These are seized Czech tanks, which were turned into tank destroyers. They were fitted with a German 75mm gun, and they did perform pretty well, but seeing all the Chad Czechs had fled to the UK, and the mystical power of Czech engineering had been funneled into God's gift to the firearm world, yes of course, I'm talking about the Bren machine gun. How on earth could the Germans compete? Carrying on the trend of unpronounceable German vehicles, we also have the Puma. This is an 8-wheeled scout car, armed with a 50mm cannon. It gives the Germans a fast and powerful forward presence on the battlefield. It is infamous for being annoying as hell, popping out from where you least expect it. A bit like Heinz Guderian in Army Group A in the Bloody Ardennes. Rank 2 also has some decent premiums, mainly the Panzer 3N and the German T-34. Fast, powerful and fairly cheap, they make pretty good grinders and the former Panzer III fits very well into the German 3.0 lineup. That pretty much covers rank 2. In many ways, these vehicles represent the high point of German superiority when it comes to armoured fighting vehicles. The powerful guns, combined with the mobile chassis, give these low level German tanks a real punch, even against the heaviest of opponents. We now come on to rank 3. Basically, every vehicle in this rank is what weeraboos wank themselves to death over. I'm talking Tigers, I'm talking Panthers, I'm talking the most OP vehicle in all of War Thunder, the goddamn Whirlwind. First up though, we have another Panzer IV. What's that? We thought we'd covered all the Panzer IVs, well you're dead wrong. Admittedly, these are the late war Panzer IVs, basically when Germany realised they'd overstepped and tried to cut corners in tank production. The Panzer IV J and H have been up armed with the 75mm L48 gun giving them additional punching power. Our battle rating 4.0, they are still very competitive, but nowhere near as dominant as the Panzer IV G and F2 down at battle rating 3.3. What? what's that? You want more Panzer IVs? Well, we have the two rank 3 SBAAs. Both the Wind and the Ostwind use the Panzer IV chassis. The former is armed with four 20mm cannons and is insanely powerful at close range protection. One of these bad boys around your advancing tanks makes you basically immune from revenge bombing. The same cannot be said, however, for the latter vehicle. The Ostwin is a bit of a mixed bag. It has a single 37mm cannon with very powerful ammunition. 
but simply cannot match the Wilberwind in terms of lead downrange. The Germans also turned several Panzer IV chassis into self-propelled guns. Just like the Stug III used the Panzer III hulls, the Jag Panzer IV uses Panzer IV hulls. Again, they worked well in real life, but in War Thunder, the practicability of a turret is unquestionable. The first Jagdpanzer uses the same L48 gun found on the Panzer IV H and J, giving it equally good penetrating power. But the real magic is found at battery rating 5.3, with the upgunned Panzer IV 70. This uses the specially developed long barrel 75mm L70 gun, the same weapon found on the Panzer V, infamously known as the Panther. Which brings us on to our next tank. Although officially classed as a medium tank, in War Thunder, it essentially plays like a heavy tank. It has thick frontal armour and nearly 200mm of penetration with that KWK 42 cannon. While it does have notable weak spots, such as the gun mantlet, and basically the entire side of the hull, most Soviet and American tanks will struggle to kill or even critically damage the Panther from the front, making it one of the most fearsome tanks at battery rating 5.7. The big brain German players will main the Panthers, whereas the feeble minded virgins will go for our next tank, the Tiger. The Tiger is undoubtedly a less capable vehicle compared to the Panther. It has no sloped armour, a weaker gun, and is also less mobile. And worse still, most people who play the Tiger have absolutely no idea what they're doing in it. They just saw some World War II movies and drive straight in front of Allied guns and then scream about how Germany suffers on Reddit. In all seriousness though, the Tiger was developed as a breakthrough tank, designed to smash a hole in an enemy's line, which then the lighter Panzer III, fours and fives would exploit. They work well in this role, but not good enough, famously getting pushed back in Moscow and the deserts of Tunisia. In game, they do have a larger gun compared to the Panther, which does give them better post penetration damage but the smaller, higher velocity gun of the Panther has more penetration, which in my opinion, makes it much more effective. For this reason, you can loosely describe the Tiger 1 as a brawling tank, whereas the Panther is somewhat more of a distant killer. There are several variants of both the Tiger and the Panther, with the main differences in all variants mainly being engine power and nominal changes to armour. These two tanks will make up the real power in any rank 3 German lineup. We also have a lot of premiums in this rank, notably the German KV-1C armed with the same 75mm found in the late war Panzer IVs. Even though it's recently had its battery rate increased to 5.0, it is still insanely powerful. It combines decent armour and mobility with a relatively good gun. While overshadowed by the Panther's insane penetration, the KV-1C's humble 140mm is still far above average for battery rating 5.0. As for other German premiums, we also have the Brumbar, KV-1B and the German Sherman, all of which are past their prime in my opinion. Gone are the days of the German low tier seal clubbing. Overall though, tier 3 is very strong for the Germans. 5.7 is considered the stomping ground of German mains for a reason. The combination of tricky frontal armour and high penetration guns gives the Veribus a distinct advantage over pretty much every other nation around this battle rating. We now come on to the once mighty 4th rank of the German Tetri. These vehicles are the pinnacle of German World War II tank design and were practically unstoppable. Well, at least until Gaijin added a bunch of heater fest firing tanks a few years ago. And are these late world German behemoths are slowly falling out of the meta at battery rating 6.3 and upwards. Regardless, we'll start with the Austrian 2. This is basically a clone of the Austrian 1, except it now has two 37mm guns. Twice the firepower, but still equally as dated. The Germans should have known better though. Having two things isn't always as good for you as having just the one. In my opinion, the Wind is still the go-to SPAA even at these high battle ratings. We also get a welcome surprise. You may have realised that we've mainly covered medium heavy and SPA vehicles. This is due to Germany not really producing any late war light tanks. And Germany technically didn't produce this thing either. The M41 is an American light tank developed between World War II and Korea. It was given to the Germans when they were allowed to start rewielding an army during the Cold War. While it is unrealistic for an M41 to be fighting alongside German late war heavies, it gives the German 4th rank a very important feature. Heat FS. This little light tank has a powerful chemical round. Combined with its high mobility, it finally gives the Germans a fast scouting vehicle, something which is only found with the Puma back at battery rating 2.7. This modern combination of firepower and speed unfortunately cannot describe the rest of the vehicles in this rank. The other vehicles are slow, heavy, and while having powerful guns, struggle to utilise them on most maps. This is probably best demonstrated by the Ferdinand. This has a monster 88mm cannon which can penetrate pretty much every vehicle it meets, but the god awful mobility combined with a long reload just cannot compete with the speedy fast firing tanks found in the Soviet, American and British territories. The same kind of issues can also be used to describe the Tiger 2. 
minus the long reload. The Tiger's gun is also a long barreled 88mm. It offers incredible penetration with an insanely fast reload for the battery rated. Under 8 seconds with an ace crew, the comparable American and Soviet heavies have reloads in excess of 15 seconds. While this is a clear advantage, as I covered in my American Tech Tree review, the age of heavy tanks is well and truly on the decline at around battery rating 6.7. Not only are you surrounded by incredibly fast, hard hitting light and medium tanks, but you are also constantly up tier to battery rating 7.3, where heat effects is practically par for the course. We have two Tiger II variants. The P differs from the H purely in the turret. The former has a rounded turret front, which can easily be penetrated if you shoot at the flattest part of the armour. The latter H has a flat turret with a constant thickness of 185mm of armour. Both Tiger II variants have incredibly good upper frontal plates, which makes them practically immune from all APCBC rounds in game, at least around battery rating 6.7 and upwards. The Tiger IIs are by no means irrelevant and are still incredibly competitive in game, but due to the heat effects rounds of many light and medium tanks, the Tiger II's distinct advantage in firepower just isn't there anymore. The Tiger IIs which mainly saw combat in 1944 are going up against vehicles designed and built in the 1950s. While this is a little bit unfair, it is a testament to just how good the Tiger IIs are, if played correctly. The downside of these tanks is that most guns can penetrate similar amounts of armour, mainly due to their chemical heat FS rounds. These type of rounds also negate the Tiger II's armour. Even small calibre heat FS rounds can penetrate in excess of 300mm of armour, allowing them to cleave right through the Tiger II at all ranges and pretty much all angles. The Tiger II is a perfect demonstration of the old heavy tank fallacy in War Thunder. If you're down tiered, it's borderline overpowered, but if you're slightly up tiered, then you're pretty much useless. We then come on to the premiums, and in my opinion, you only really have two choices, the IU-251 and the Tiger II SLA. The former is a fast light tank with a hard hitting gun, infamously overpowered when first introduced, its effectiveness in my opinion has declined since the introduction of the German M41, whereas the latter, the Tiger II SLA, is basically a Tiger II clone with a slightly more powerful engine. Both of these premiums are powerful, However, the IU251 is incredibly good in terms of mobility, which in my opinion, sets itself out as a favourite premium in rank 4, as most other German vehicles are large, slow, and can be described pretty much the complete opposite of mobile. But to conclude, the days of rank 4 German supremacy are long gone unfortunately. Just as the spamming of T-34s and Shermans crippled the German army in real life, the spamming and selling of heat fest firing premiums by Gaijin has also killed the German army in War Thunder. The fifth rank of the German tech tree. Basically the time in history where Germany went from being known for traditional right wing values such as family, rights and genocide to a more liberal, left wing progressive society known for making tanks, cars and worst of all, Metigel. It's also the rank where the Germans got a good old taste of communism in the form of East Germany. This means the German tech tree gets a taste of both superpowers. Ironically, considering the Americans eventually won, the Soviets produced probably the best rank 5 German vehicle the BMP-1. This is the battery rating 7.3 light tank found in both the Soviet and German tech trees. Not only does it yet again give the Germans a fast light vehicle, but its mouse aim guided missiles are incredibly powerful, especially considering it instantly negates any heavily armoured tanks, such as the American T-29 and the various hordes of Soviet super heavies. Both its missiles and low velocity heat FS main gun can easily punish any enemy you come across. It is truly one of the strongest German vehicles in the game, at least tier for tier. We also have the Mard A1, in many ways the NATO equivalent to said BMP. It shares similar features, mainly having a light or infantry fighting vehicle chassis, a top mounted mouse aim missile, but where the Mard differs is a 20mm rapid fire canyon. In my opinion, this is a negative when compared to the short 73mm found on the BMP, but the 20mm is certainly a very potent air defence weapon. To me, the BMP is far more suited to anti tank work whereas the Marder is more point defence system. Speaking of which, the so called dedicated air defence of rank 5 is the Kugelblitz. Now there's no debating this thing is past its prime. Veteran War Thunder players will remember when this thing was considered first spawn material, due to its insane guns. Being armed with the legendary Mark 103s, it has insanely high muzzle velocity, which combined with the HVAP ammo, gives it an insane 95mm of penetration. This used to be heavily exploited, even more than the Falcon. As a result, Gaijin nerfed the belts, giving you one HVAP round for every two standard AP rounds. This killed the magic of the Kugel, and now it is considered a very poor SPAA. It also doesn't have a very high traverse rate, or high gun elevation, making it pretty poor at tracking fast moving targets. 
and the nerf to the belts means it struggles to take on tanks at its battle rating, so it's kind of just faded from memory. I don't see many of these on the battlefield. Again, even at this high battle rating, the Whirlwind may still be your best choice. Another relic in my opinion is a Yag Tiger. While no means forgotten, I'd say it's equally past its glory days. The 128mm cannon is very impressive, but the vehicle is slow and heavy, and suffers more than the Tiger 2 is rank 4. The heat FS and Sabo spam in rank 5 is much more common, and your armour is basically Swiss cheese to these types of rounds. While powerful in a down tier, or on large sniping maps, the current trend of guiding to introduce smaller and or tight urban maps means these vehicles just get bullied. Once again, by smaller, faster vehicles with heat FS firing guns. We then come on to the saddest vehicle in all of War Thunder. Not only is it only available to meet new people once a year, it's also totally useless at its battle rating. I'm of course talking about the mouse. Yes, I know the 128mm gun is very powerful. And yes, its armour is decent. And yes, half the Kriegsmarine's working engines crammed into it give it decent mobility for an ultra heavy. But the armour can be penetrated by heat of first 5 from a 3 inch gun. It's completely past its peak at battle rating 7.7. .7. I'd actually personally move it down to 7.3. It will still get beaten around like an Irish housewife, but it will at least have a chance. We then come on to the two main tanks of rank 5. The M48 and the Leopard 1. The M48 was an American import. It's a medium tank by design, featuring a fast firing but rather mediocre gun. The armour is somewhat good against conventional APCBC shells, but it's meaningless against chemical and subcaliber rounds. The M48 also have heavy tank levels of mobility. The tank at battle rating 7.0 isn't half bad to be honest, but like most modern Americans, it's bloated and heavy. The Leopard in comparison is quite the opposite. Granted, it doesn't have anything close to the levels of armour of the M48, but it makes up for this in unprecedented levels of mobility for a medium tank. This speed, combined with the L7 105mm gun, creates one of the strongest battle rating 7.3 tanks in the game. While it doesn't have a stabiliser like the British Centurion, and it doesn't have the armour of the Soviet T-54s, but what it is, is highly mobile, and it can easily deal with any opponent it faces. It comes with Sable rounds as standard, and Heat FS as an optional unlock, with the former arguable being the better round. This means it's got terrific performance, even when stock. And finally, we have one last tank to cover, the premium M47. This is actually a pretty nice little premium, if not a little expensive. It has good mobility, a cracking gun, but rather lacklustre armour. It's technically a medium tank, but functions more of a light tank, minus the speed. Being a battle rating 7.3, it fits very nicely alongside the Leopard 1, M48, BMP and the Mard A1, giving you a very powerful lineup at battle rating 7.3, with or without this American premium reject. Ah, uh, rank 6. The rank where the Germans finally recover from battle rating 5.7. Above 5.7, it feels somewhat like a constant retreat. The higher you go, the more timid you have to play the German tank. A bit like the Germans at Stalingrad, and Moscow, and France. That all changes in rank 6, and the Germans go back to arguably being the strongest nation in War Thunder. We'll start with the light vehicle. The trend set by the BMP and the Mara continuing to rank 6, with an added deadly flavour. With the Beg Light Panzer, you retain the deadly mouse guided missiles, but you gain a 57mm rapid firing cannon and thermal imaging. This gun can fire a pretty hefty amount of ammunition, including solid shot AP, AP with explosive filler, high explosive, as well as proximity fused rounds, allowing you to take on low flying aircraft. All of this are battle rating 8.3. One downside of this tank is the lack of a stabiliser. Most other nations at battle rating 8.3 are rolling around dicks out with fully stabilised guns allowing them to fire accurately on the move, rocking out with their cocks out, so to speak. Luckily, the Germans do get access to some of these vehicles. The TAM is an Argentine light tank, designed and developed by a German company. I wonder why the Argentine government has such close ties to the German government. Who could possibly know? As I said, the TAM is a light tank, but it's armed with the good old British L7 gun, a weapon found on pretty much every NATO tank around this period, so get used to hearing me say it. It's the one time Britain actually produced something good, so I've got to bring it up, lads. I can't let the country down now, can we? Being a 105mm German gun, it gets DM23. Another thing I'm going to be mentioning a lot. DM23 is a type of AP FSDS round, which has both high penetration and post penetration damage. The combination of the British 105 and the German DM23 has literally led to Germany dominating the battle rating of 8.7 to 9.3 for the past two years. But seeing as Gaijin has added the terms recently, Every 8.7 game is now a full up tier, with a TAM is just an XP piñata for the Soviet wallet warriors. We also have the bane of pretty much all top tier players, the spawn kill supreme, 
the one and only, the Radkampf Wagon 90. This bad boy defies physics with its insane level of traction, allowing it to approach Mach 1. Or so it seems like it, seeing as I get shot from behind by these things 15 seconds into a fucking battle. Not only are they fast, but they feature a high performance APFSD as round known as DM33, giving this thing the same gun performance as some of the top tier German main battle tanks. This exceptional lethality allows the Radkampf Wagon to be used in a top tier lineup at battery rating 11.0 despite being located at battery rating 9.3. Another vehicle which punches far above its own weight is the Gepard. I swear to god if Frederick Kanisha came back to life, he'd write an entire book discussing whether the Gepard or Werber one is more overpowered. God is dead, he remains dead, until he respawns in a Gepard and magically one-shots you from 4km away. The Gepard uses a Leopard 1 chassis from rank 5 and plops a big old radar system on top of it. This search and track radar, combined with two 35mm cannons, turns this vehicle into the bane of all American cast players. The Gepard's mortal enemy is the American AH-1G, although in the wild the Gepard is known to feed on Skyhawks, MI4s and Harrys alike. A very dangerous beast indeed. The Gepard wasn't the end of the Leopard 1's development. As the Cold War progressed, the Soviet armour improved, and the German government had to improve the Leopard fleet. They did this first with the Leopard 1A1A1. This added some basic applique armour to the turret and gun mantlet. The tank is basically just a Leopard 1. It lacks a laser rangefinder, and is at battery rating 8.7. This leads it at a severe disadvantage. Things do improve with the Leopard 1A5. This was developed after the Leopard 2 entered development. It improved the fire control system of existing Leopard tanks, giving it both a laser rangefinder and thermal imaging, which for battery rating 9.0 is basically standard. Both of these Leopard variants are armed with the L7 and DM23, giving them good offensive capabilities. But they are essentially armoured with 1970s technology, aka absolutely no armour at all. Seeing as both these tanks meet the 9.7 Soviet hordes, the dominance isn't as established as it was several years ago. But both tanks are still more than capable of performing well in game. We also have a few more American vehicles to talk about, and just like all the other American tanks in the German tech tree, they're real stinkers. Just like the way the Leopard 1s were upgraded, the old M48s were also modernised. The M48G received a stabiliser, as well as the L7 gun, whereas the M48 Super got some add-on applique armour, which is highly effective against chemical rounds such as heat FS, but at battery ratings 8.7 and above, it's kinetic energy APFSDS rounds which become the meta, rendering this type of armour rather redundant. The Super also gets thermal imaging, as well as a DM33 fan on the Radkamp Wagon 90. However, due to it being slow and poorly armoured, it doesn't retain its usefulness, unlike the Radkamp Wagon 90. The last American influenced vehicle is a KPZ 70. This was a joint American and German failure, a concept of a future tank that went way over budget. The Americans and Germans both wanted different things, and in the end, both nations developed independent vehicles. The Americans with the M1 Abrams, and the German with the Leopard 2. But before that, the KPZ-70 was born, basically a last ditch attempt to get the thing to work. All three crew members are located in the turret, and the 152mm gun has a 6 second autoloader, giving it very good firepower. It can launch mouse guided missiles, as well as fire APFSDS round, giving it good flexibility. It also has a 20mm roof mounted cannon. The downsides however, are being a lack of a thermal imaging and pretty poor survivability. As I mentioned, all of the crew are in the turret so a single round will frequently kill all the crew members, which you know, is a bad thing. I said earlier that the Germans set about designing their own independent main battle tank after the failure of the KPZ-70 project. This pretty famously resulted in the Leopard 2, but we have an earlier version of that in the game. This is the Leopard 2K. It's a prototype hull and turret, with the then new 120mm smoothbore cannon. Like most of the other German tanks, it likes thermal imaging. While this wasn't too bad with the Leopard A1A1 at 8.7, the Leo 2K lacks thermal imaging at battery rating 9.7 is a major concern. Thermal imaging is pretty much needed at top tier now, due to the frequency of night and low light battles. While you do get a standard night vision device, Let's be honest, night vision is pretty much useless in War Thunder. The Germans got their shit together however for the actual production variants of the Leopard. Shown in game by the Leopard 2A4, this has the same 120mm cannon, but gains thermal imaging and a new turret, with a more complex composite armour scheme, giving you much more protection compared to the Leopard 2K. The Leopard 2A4 is the fastest of all the Leopard 2 variants in game. Granted, this is due to subsequent variants receiving upgrades, but sometimes it is just useful to have sheer performance. The Leopard 2A4 certainly does shine in the mobility department, but the reality is that battery rating 10.0, the 2A4 just isn't that special. It has pretty low resolution thermal imaging, a lackluster APFSDS round, and relatively low armour for the battery rating. While as I've said the mobility is fantastic, it feels like the Leopard 2A4 plays more like a fast medium than a main battle tank. We then come on to the last premiums of today's videos, 
and I believe you only really have one choice. The TAM-2 IP is pretty bad. It has no thermals and no real protection. Like the M48 Super, it receives additional composite armour, but at battery rating 8.7, hardly anyone is firing Kita Fess. Therefore, in my opinion, the best rank 6 German grinder is the good old Leopard L44. Once infamous for being the only German tank with thermals, this was controversial as it was sitting behind a $60 paywall, which blatantly showed Gaijin's desire to milk its players of money. Since then, as I've already covered, there have been many thermal equipped tanks introduced to the game, so the novelty of the L44 has slightly worn off, but its effectiveness of a grinder has not. It has the same 120mm gun found on the Leopard 2K, at a much lower battery rating of 9.0. This gives you exceptional gun performance, but just like most other battery rating 8.7 to 9.7 vehicles, you will be constantly dragged up to battery rating 9.7 to face the Terms and Challenger Mark IIs. The 6th rank of the German Tetri certainly is very powerful. It combines balanced main battle tanks, powerful light scouting vehicles, air defence systems and exceptional close air support. While it isn't its former self, I think we can all agree that it's a good thing as German win rates used to be insanely high. Regardless of meta changes throughout the years, all of the vehicles in this rank are still competitive and useful on the battlefield. Apart from battery rating 5.7, the German 8.7 to 9.3 lineup is probably the second strongest German lineup in the game. Rank 7 is basically where the Germans become whole W to win. The main fighting force of this rank are unquestionably the Leopards. They're back, and back stronger than ever. First, you have the Leopard 2A5. This is essentially a Leopard 2A4, but with additional turret armour, as well as DM43, the latter of which was recently added, and when fired through the 120mm L45 cannon, gives you over 530mm of armour penetration. Not bad at all. The Leopard 2A5 was for a long time considered the best tank in War Thunder, and the tank still performs well to this day. Being a vehicle produced in the late 80s, these Leopard variants have very early forms of thermal imaging, giving them very poor resolution compared to some of the other main battle tanks in the game today. Apart from this minor downside, the 2 5s remains a strong backup in the German tank lineup. But what do I mean, backup? Surely 530mm of penetration is top tier. Well guess again, because the Germans developed the 120mm L55. Basically the same gun as found on the Leopard 2A5, just longer. I'm sure most men are envious of those German engineers. We'd all love to add a few more inches to our weapons. Does size truly matter? Well apparently yes in War Thunder, as the L55 gun in combination with an upgraded DM53 round gives you over 650mm of penetration, allowing you to penetrate every single playable vehicle in War Thunder, and yes, that includes battleships. The L55 is undoubtedly the hardest hitting gun currently in War Thunder, at least one mounted to a tank. There are rounds that come close to matching DM53 levels of penetration, notably the CL3143 round found on several Italian tanks, but these vehicles are all poorly armoured. There is no other tank which combines fairly good mobility, high levels of armour, and an insanely high penetrating gun. There are downsides, just like the 2A5, the 2A6 still has low resolution thermal optics, which do make it notably weaker on low vision maps, especially compared to vehicles such as the T80 BVM, Challenger 2, and even several IFVs. There are some rank 7 German vehicles with high res thermals, notably the TAM 2C. This is an upgrade to the TAM light tank with covered in rank 6. Like the Leopard 1A5, it has merely been upgraded with better thermal imaging and fire control system, as well as a DM43 shell. This gives it over 430mm of penetration, all whilst using the same 105mm gun found on the previous TAM variant. The 2C does have third generation thermal imaging, giving it very good high visibility of thermals, easily one of the best in the German lineup. The tank, Although a light tank, in my opinion is pretty slow, and should be used more as a sniping, almost a tank destroyer, rather than a more aggressive up close and personal scout. That battlefield role should be left to the Radkamp Wagon 90 we talked about earlier. We also have some of the best air defence weapons in rank 7 as well. Up first we have the Flarak Panzer. This isn't too amazing to be honest, it's a dedicated missile system, meaning it cannot fall back on cannons if it gets pushed by enemy heavies. It certainly is no Tunguska, but with its rolling free missiles, it can certainly sweep the skies with both jets and helicopters. The Germans then decided that the Roland Free wasn't good enough and developed whatever the fuck this thing is. Nobody knows how to pronounce it, and it's just a truck that someone plunked a search and track radar on top of. They also gave it the VT-1 missiles. These travel at 1,250 meters per second compared to the Roland Free's 900 meters per second. Basically, they travel as fast as some APFSDS rounds and are incredibly powerful against subsonic aircraft. They also have good range and combined with that fast velocity, it gives enemy cast players very little time to react to an incoming missile. 
giving Germany probably the best dedicated ground-to-earth missile defence system in the game. But in my opinion, the ADATs and Tunguska are still better all-rounders. So Germany has some of the best main battle tanks, air defence weapons and scouting vehicles. Rank 7 really is very strong for the German and looks to remain that way in the future. While there are some obvious downsides to Rank 7 Germany, notably the low resolution thermals and the inflexibility of several of their vehicles, the sheer power of the Leopard 2A5 and 2A6 is just unmatched in War Thunder. Overall, the German tech tree is probably the easiest nation to start with in War Thunder. The vehicles are reliable and have relatively low skill ceilings making them easily accessible for most players. No matter which rank you're in, the German nation has a lineup that is both powerful and fun. Like the American tech tree, the Germans do suffer slightly around battle rating 6.3 to 7.3, but the large, heavily armoured German beasts meet their fast, heater-fest firing, annoying little medium tanks. As we covered though, the Germans get their own annoying little buggers in the form of the Leopard 1, which is highly effective. The Germans then take the idea of fast, hard-hitting tanks and run with it, going on to make highly competitive tanks such as the KPZ-70, TAM-2 and the hundreds of other top tier tanks whose name I struggle to read, never mind pronounce. A new player to the German Tetri has around 100 new vehicles to experience. Not only are they fun to play, they are also highly competitive in game. Whether it's the Panzer II at rank 1, the Panther in rank 4 or the Leopard II in rank 7, every vehicle is powerful, easy to play and more importantly, has a long list of other fun vehicles to play at similar battle ratings. Thank you very much for watching this segment lads. Be sure to keep an eye out on my channel as I plan on covering each of the remaining nations. If you enjoyed this video, please do consider liking and subscribing to the channel. It really does help me out. Also consider becoming a member. But once again lads, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.